Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, Wassalatu Wassalam, Ala Rasulullah. Welcome to Iqa, Introductory Quran Recitation Assistance. My intention, inshallah, is to create a series of videos for my brothers and sisters who are new to Islam or new to practicing Islam with memorizing Quran and other necessary Arabic, such as what to say in Salah. Now, I'm not an Arabic expert, I don't speak Arabic fluently, and I haven't had more than three semesters of Arabic classes. However, based on what I've learned and on my own experiences, I've come up with an approach that, inshallah, I hope will make it easier for you to learn and to correctly pronounce the Arabic that you need to know. These videos will be Arabic alphabet three, only using transliteration. Now, I know there are a lot of really confusing and inconsistent transliterations out there on the internet, so inshallah, I hope that mine will be easier to understand. The thing is, one of the main problems with transliterations that are out there is they don't actually explain to you what you're supposed to, how you're supposed to pronounce anything. So when you're reading the transliterated Arabic, I want to make sure that you're pronouncing everything correctly, especially those sounds that you don't hear in English. So inshallah, before anything, let's clarify any transliteration issues that might be confusing. Double letters are actually doubled letters. Sometimes you'll see the same letter twice, like two B's or two L's. I know in English we're very used to ignoring double letters. For example, the word letter has two T's. But we don't say letter, we just say letter. However, with Arabic, double letters actually mean that you have to double the letter. Just hold it twice as long. For example, the Arabic word for my lord is Rabbi, with two B's. Two B's. If it was one B, you would say Rabbi. But double B makes it Rabbi. Long vowels. Okay, so whenever you see an A, an I, or a U with a line on top of it, that's going to be a long vowel. So the A would be pronounced A, the I would be pronounced E, and the U would be pronounced U. That's only if they have a line on top of it. If they don't have a line on top of it, that's going to be short vowels. The short vowels are A, I, and U without a line on top. So the A would be pronounced A, the I would be pronounced I, and the U would be pronounced U. TH. TH is a tricky issue. TH represents the TH in think. DH represents the TH in the. This is to avoid any confusion between the two sounds, since they're two different letters in Arabic. So when you're reading the transliteration, anytime you see TH, you're going to pronounce that as the TH in think, the unvoiced TH. Whenever you see DH, you're going to pronounce that like the TH in the. That's the voiced TH, the. The next four letters have a very similar sound in common. It's produced when the back of your tongue is raised and the middle of your tongue kind of sinks down low so it comes out like an aw sound, aw. Whenever you come across any of the next four letters, any vowel that comes after it is going to take on that aw quality. The first one is DH with a line under it. Underline DH is a heavy DH. The underline DH sound is just like the regular DH sound. Remember it sounds like the TH in the, except that the back of your tongue is raised and the middle of your tongue comes down to like a bowl shape. So instead of the, it's pronounced ball. The same goes for the next three sounds. D with a dot under it is a heavy D sound. Instead of the, it's pronounced ball. T with a dot under it is a heavy T. The T with the dot under it is pronounced the same way. Instead of ta, it's pronounced ball. S with the dot under it is a heavy S. For the S with the dot under it, again, same sound. Raise the back of your tongue, lower the middle. So instead of se, it's pronounced slaw. Okay, so remember, with those four, any vowel that comes after it is going to take on that aw quality. How are you doing so far? So far so good? Okay, let's move on. H with the dot under it. It's a hard H sound, like checking your breath. The H with the dot under it is another sound that doesn't exist in English. It's a hard, breathy H sound. Think about the sound you make when you're checking your breath or when you're trying to fog up your glasses. It comes more from the back of your throat than a normal H. So instead of H, it sounds like H. KH is like the H with the dot under it, but the back of the tongue makes contact. Another sound not used in English. The KH sound is often associated with Arabic. But this sound is actually found in many languages, including Greek, Hebrew, and German. It's very close to the sound of the H with the dot under it. 
but instead of being open, ha, the back of your tongue will actually touch the uvula, that little dangly thing in the back of your throat. So it's pronounced ha. So it kind of sounds like you're trying to clear your throat. The little accent mark pointing to the left is a glottal stop. The Arabic letter Hamza represents the glottal stop. This is actually a sound we use all the time in English without realizing it. For example, say apple. We don't think of this word as beginning with a consonant, but it actually does. That's the glottal stop, that uh, uh sound. In English grammar, we try to avoid using this sound in the middle of speech because, well, it sounds kind of awkward. For example, if you use the word apple in a sentence, you might say, I have an apple. Now listen to how it sounds if I say a instead of an. I have an apple. You hear that? That's the glottal stop. The apostrophe is a throaty vowel sound. The ein is probably the trickiest sound of the Arabic language. To put it simply, it's like a forced throaty vowel sound. To be technical, it's actually the voiced version of the dotted H, the ha. So, good news, if you can pronounce ha, you should be able to pronounce a. Be careful not to get the apostrophe confused with the accent mark. The accent mark is the glottal stop, the apostrophe is the forced throaty vowel sound. Accent, a. Uh. Apostrophe, a. Uh. GH is the gargling sound. Just like the a uh is the voiced version of the ha, the ra is the voiced version of the ha. Just remember that the gh, the ra sound, is the sound you make when you're gargling water. Q is like K pronounced in the back of your throat. In English, we tend to pronounce the Q, the K, and sometimes the C in the exact same way, with just the K sound. Now, in Arabic, there is a K sound, and that's represented by the K. But there's also another sound, which is represented by the Q. It's just like a K, but you pronounce it in the back of your throat. So instead of your tongue hitting the roof of your mouth, K, it hits the back of your throat, Ka. Just like with Fa, Va, Ba, and Sla, the Ka is also going to make any vowel that comes after it take on that A quality. Okay, so inshallah, that should be all of the tricky sounds that you might run into. Let's go over all the sounds one more time in a quick review. Ah, E. Ooh. Uh. I. O. The. The. Ball. Ball. Paw. Saw. Ha. Ha. Ah. Ah. Ha. Ha. Rabbi illa hatta. Now that you're acquainted with the sounds of the Arabic language, you can move on to memorizing and correctly pronouncing the words of the Salah and some short surahs from the Quran. Inshallah, I hope you find these videos helpful and may Allah make it easy for you to continue learning. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How many words she's read before She's consumed two thousand books or more Musty pulp and glue Soundproof her tiny room She cannot understand why This book in her hand Fascinates her now so much She's almost shy to touch Don't think about the words It's just a book, paper and ink She reaffirms, reminds herself A book can't dictate what to think it invites intrigues or more than others on her shelf Is it just another book? She sits questioning herself Oh Allah, she's so afraid to read